Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to take a further look into the UVW Unwrap um, editor and modifier here. Uh, we've got an actual character head that we want to flatten out and unwrap so that we can take it into a program like Photoshop and uh, paint some custom textures, wrinkles, and body art, and anything else that we need uh, to really get these textures onto a character who uh, is a little bit uh, organic in shape rather than a hard surface like a, a crate or something along those lines. Uh, we're going to do uh, what we call a quick peel uh, for this character, which means we need to worry about editing seams and all this good stuff. Uh, currently here, I've got this character's head. Uh, kind of a simple character. He's uh, all by himself in here, and he's currently, if I go to the Modify tab, I've got a Mesh Smooth on. And uh, we don't want to do this with Mesh Smooth on because it gives us, uh, you know, quadruple to quintuple the amount of polygons uh, that we are going to actually need for the texturing of this thing. So we're going to go ahead and uh, trash can the Mesh Smooth modifier and get him back to uh, his base polygon model state here. Uh, as low poly as possible, always make our jobs a little bit easier. And uh, then we're going to go ahead in the modifier list and all the way down towards the bottom, we are going to find the UVW or unwrap UVW modifier here. It's got to say unwrap, or otherwise, we won't have any of these tools to work with. Now, the way I model characters, uh, I usually start with a small object, uh, one of the details, be it uh, a sphere for around the eyes or a single polygon, even for around one of the, uh, the openings in the head here, uh, which in the end, uh, does not act a little bit more like a simple box or a plane might act uh, with already unwrapped coordinates kind of available to us. Uh, so you're going to probably end up with a whole lot of these ugly green seams going in plenty of terrible directions. So our first job here is to clean this up, and we want to get rid of all of these ugly seams where we don't want them, and then draw in our own where we're going to want them. There's a pretty easy way to do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my polygon selection sub-object, and I'm going to turn off the ignore back facing button down here. And I'm going to try and select all the polygons in his head. Uh, do a quick spin around just to make sure that every last polygon shows up nice and red, and then I'll jump into my open UV editor here. Uh, it's a disaster. Modeling this way leaves our UVs kind of completely all over the place in about a hundred different sizes. Uh, and it's pretty terrifying right off the bat. Uh, what we're going to do to start this out is uh, we're going to go up to our mapping menu and into the flatten mapping. Uh, now normally this would, uh, if I would go ahead and hit the OK button right now, we would get a whole lot of little pieces and parts, but they would resize them for us and kind of fit them into our window here. Uh, I don't want all these pieces and parts because that means I have to sew them all together, which, uh, you know, Quite a while ago, we used to kind of have to do, and and uh, it took way too long. So instead, we're going to go map, mapping, flatten mapping, all of these things still selected, and instead of the 45 default polygon angle, uh, I'm going to put in 180 and say the OK there. What that does is put your character's head entirely back together. The only seams we've got are where there are actual openings. Uh, around the neck, the eyes, the mouth, uh, a couple of the nostrils, and the inside of the ears here, where there are no polygons uh, connected. Uh, in our UVW map uh, editor here, we'll see half the character's face because the other half is right on top of it. Uh, and this is definitely not conducive to painting on, but we've gotten our seams, all those messy seams at least, uh, out of the way now. And now we can start to edit and draw in our own seams, and then we'll do the uh, the peel and uh, flatten them out. So for here, we can actually get out of the editor, go ahead and X out of it, and uh, I'll unselect my polygons, and where I've got these nice, you know, uh, computer-generated default green seams, we're going to actually use the, uh, underneath here, our seam editors uh, in the UV unwrap modifier settings to draw in our user seams, which are going to actually appear blue. Now to do this, we need to decide how we want to flatten this guy out. And there are going to be a few uh, pesky areas that are going to cause us some issues if we don't address. And those are anything that uh, what we call, might call undercuts that uh, kind of fold in inside and around uh, any of these areas. Like I've got the, the mouth kind of modeled in and then up here so that, uh, that the head looks thick. 
uh, as well as you know part of the eyes and the inside and the no nostrils go all the way in and up and uh, and all around the the ears. This whole thing is almost one giant big uh, terrible horrifying undercut. So what we're going to do is draw in some seams. We're going to cut some areas out of this head that really don't matter. Uh, honestly, we don't care about the texture on the inside of this uh, uh, extrude from the eye because it's going to be behind the eyeball and no one's ever going to see it. Uh, so we're going to cut, so, cut those out and we also need to cut in a seam down the back of his head so that we can eventually, you know, split him in two behind here and peel these flaps out forward to flatten this guy's head. So, back over in our UV unwrap settings, we're going to come down to the peel area where we've got our editable seams. We've got the, the first one, which is edit seams, and just to show you how this works, uh, clicking will create a blue user seam. Alt clicking will get rid of one if you ever need to do that. Sometimes cleaning some of those up uh, can get uh, pretty hairy. As well as holding down control, you can add to these seams. Again, Alt to undo, Control to add, and just click to grab the original. We've also got, and this is what we're going to use a little bit more today, is the point-to-point -point seams. These come in handy because wherever you decide to start will be at the vertex point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click there, and then you get the, the little dotted rubber band kind of thing, and we can go to another seam and it will kind of connect the dots for us. So it makes our lives a little bit easier. We can kind of come down here. I do it in chunks just to be careful that I don't, uh, you know, try to do it over. It's going to try and make its own path there. So Control Z to undo. And I'm going to split the back of his head down the center from the tip top. It's going to be kind of under his hair usually or something along those lines uh, in a position that we don't care or we can easily make sure that that's the same color when we get to painting in Photoshop. Uh, right click to end the seam creation. And uh, there's our first seam from the top of his head down through the neck. And we'll kind of come in here and we'll zoom in on the eyes here. And we just want to kind of cut out anything that we're not going to see. The main parts of the eye is going to be from this, this lid on forward. So I'm going to cut some seams around this little lip here. There we are. And feel free to go uh, one at a time if you need to. Right click to end again. And we'll do the same thing for the other eye. Now you can go point to point if, uh, if seeing all these polygons on top of each other uh, gets uh, a little confusing. Uh, sometimes it does for my brain. And there we go. We've cut this in two. Now this piece will be separate from the rest of the face there. Uh, down around the mouth, we'll want to do something similar. Uh, sometimes I like to, you know, zoom into the head here to do this, and uh, we'll start and we'll kind of cut this out, so that uh, when we do peel this guy's head and unfold everything, it doesn't include these parts that are kind of folded over on top of themselves, because that always just makes kind of an awful mess. Uh, there we go. There's our lips. If I zoom around out to the front, we'll see that just behind that first uh, curve into the mouth, we've kind of opened those up. Uh, we'll do the nostrils as well, just because, uh, you know, just this one little row of polygons can cause us some issues that we just don't need to have a headache dealing with. I'm going to cut those around, right click in, and there we are, right click in. The last place that's going to cause us probably some difficulty are the ears. And I honestly like to do ears completely separate from the main body of the head. So we're just going to cut the ear completely off of this guy. So I'm going to kind of come in here around that. This one might be another one that I zoom in on. Uh, and continue. to cut completely around that ear and cut it off the head entirely. And I'll probably do the same thing over here. And I like to zoom in so I can see from behind. It's just a little less confusing. And I can see exactly where that ear is attached to our head a little bit better. All right, right-click to end. 
Uh, the ears and everything, they'll all flatten out as separate pieces now. Uh, and then the main body of the head should be ready to peel. So we'll go ahead and turn off our point-to-point -point creation of seams there. And we'll go back in to our editor. Uh, open up the UVW editor here. Uh, here I like, we've already still got our polygons uh, selected as our sub-object. I'm going to go ahead and hit the select element UV toggle and just click him once. We'll grab all these polygons. And our peel will be right in here on the right-hand side in this control panel inside the edit UVs window. Uh, we're going to choose the quick peel. Looks like this thing that's kind of peeling off a slice of an orange with a lightning bolt on it. Uh, and this is, this is really great. Uh, 3D Studio has added this in, in recent years that... Uh, uh, one click and everything gets peeled across the head and flattened out uh, based on our seams. Uh, you'll now notice that uh, a couple of things are still lying on top of each other, but we've got separate pieces uh, now, as here's probably a couple of our ears, here are the insides of the eyes, this is the inside of that mouth that we separated, and of course our nostrils here. Uh, it's flattened our ears out as well, best it can. So now we can actually do some detail work uh, painting inside those ears. And the main body of the head is now perfectly flattened out as well. One last step before we take this out to a program like Photoshop. Let's select all these pieces again here. And we've got the Arrange Elements panel down here. Uh, there's a button in here called the Pack Normalize button, which is going to keep scale uh, proper for you and fit everything into our window so that we can render out a uh, texture uh, to paint on in Photoshop. Uh, after you've done the pack normalize, keep the scale pretty much the same because it's kind of fixed that for you. Uh, if anything's a little bit too big, then uh, our checkerboards are, you know, might be huge on his forehead but very small on his ears and that's going to cause us uh, a resolution issue. Uh, but from here, if you prefer, uh, we can do things like, you know, maybe rotate this head so that it's a little bit more straight up and down, uh, which just makes a little bit more sense to myself when I'm painting and everything, as well as maybe, you know, take some of these bits like the nostrils, which, you know, they're going to be probably a flat interior skin color anyway, so we don't need to, to worry about them too much. And I just like to, to box them together uh, and make sure everything is on the inside and away from that original head. Uh, so that we can paint on everything, both individually as well as getting some of these things like, you know, the seam around the ear to this entire thing, the same color, so they kind of uh, match that head in the end. Once you've finished packing and, and, and removing or repositioning or rotating everything around here, uh, it's just a matter of uh, exporting this. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of come up to the uh, tools, and we're going to go to a render UVW template which will pop up this little window. Uh, you can choose a size, whatever size you would like to make your texture. The uh, default is 1024 over 1024, which will work just fine for uh, our demonstration purposes. Uh, and then you can choose differences in colors, what color you'd like your edges to appear uh, in Photoshop, etc. Uh, but we'll leave all those default, and we're just going to hit the Render UV Template, which will render us out a regular old render window here of all of our characters flattened out edges and seams. Whoa, where did it go? There it was. Did it twice. Disappeared on me there, but we're just going to go ahead and hit the save image. I'll probably save this to my desktop. We'll call it uh, character UVs and uh, save it as whatever image file you like to work with, uh, just for you know, ease and size and, and internet purposes, we'll uh, save it out. I'll save it as a JPEG and it'll be put on my uh, on my desktop here with a bunch of other reference images I've been looking at. Then we'll jump into uh, whatever program you'd like to use to paint on and open that up. Uh, in this case, Photoshop I've got here. Find our character UVs. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, creating some new layers in Photoshop and now we can create with our digital painting techniques etc and paint on our character's skin uh, other things you might do is you know I can double click to unlock the layer maybe put it above 
and uh, do like an opacity of only 50% so I can still see them uh, but uh, now I know where I'm painting and I can still see those edges uh, and now we can go completely crazy nuts and start painting in any details we like save them back out put this into a texture and uh, well, we might as well do that real quick here I'll just give it a flat color to save some time and so that we know that it's working we'll put a little bit of this would have been much faster if I had just used the fill tool that'll work for us though uh, we'll put in a couple of uh, little details like we'll give him a freckle or something if I want to give him a dot right in the center of his forehead great uh, and just so that we know everything's going to end up in place we'll put one on his chin one over by this ear but not this ear uh, and maybe one off on his right side of his head there just so that we can see uh, what's going on here uh, we can try giving him some I don't know, strange eye makeup or something as well but after this it's all up to your digital painting and texturing skills here which mine are not the greatest so this will have to do alright I'll hide this layer file save as and this will be my character uh, either diffuse channel or color map or whatever you like to save it uh, I'll know DIFF for diffuse say OK back over in 3D Studio we can actually exit out of all of these crazy windows we still got turn off our sub object selection and uh, create a texture open up our material editors and to pop that open and I'm just going to put the one diffuse color map that we've created uh, into the diffuse texture on an empty slot. We'll go ahead and bitmap, find that silly diffuse texture that I just created, back out, turn it on, show shaded material and viewport, and assign it to your character's head. Uh, apparently, I had a texture already named that, and you can see that wherever I did paint shows up on our character just fine. From here, you would then, you know, put any smooths that you want back on your character. Uh, and those textures remain the same. So we've got a dot next to one ear, not the other, one on his chin, one on his forehead, and one over here on the uh, side of his face, and then with some awful purple sloppy eyeshadow. And this poor guy, it looks almost like an undead zombie of some sort here. But uh, from here, it's just a matter of continuing painting. Paint whatever you like, and it'll show up here. All right?